Okay, okay, relax. We are back, my chummies. I promised you a review and here it is. Now you have something to watch during phase three. Who am I kidding? You guys are not gonna watch this. You're gonna be out and about, but you shouldn't though. Anyway, I guess we should have made a video like a week earlier, but I was having so much fun with this thing. I just thought I'd take a little bit longer to play with it. Let's talk about the big guy, the Intimsys Fund HT, generously loaned to us from our friends over at AMS3D. The nature of this transaction is that of a loan machine and a new printer for unboxing purposes. No money exchanged hands and what I am about to tell you is my own opinion and these machines will go back to AMS before you can even say, do me a favor please, get out of here. If you're strong enough or have some strong friends or colleagues, just remember to wear your face masks before you ask them to help you lift this thing out of the box because this thing can't cure viruses like hydroxychloroquine can. Let's get to the mechanics. The mechanical components consist of a Cartesian array of smooth rods and LMUU bearings, moving the effector carriage to the maximum of 260 millimeters on each the X and the Y axis. The Z axis is comprised of the same max depth of 260 millimeters using a lead screw. The components are very sturdy and offer rigid, robust movement with minimal backlash. There was an issue I experienced when printing my Copic marker holder, so what you see here is banding caused by a loose fan shroud. Yes, my fault, I removed the safety cage from around the hot end in order to see better, and I forgot to tighten the screws that held it in place. I did not, however, get this issue with any of my other prints. What about the electronics, Tash? Well, I'm not entirely sure, to be honest, save for opening up the machine, which if you recall at the beginning of this video, I stated that I do not own this printer. So how can I, with a clear conscience, open it up and go to town? With that being said, I tried to research it as much as I, as I could, and I noticed that it uses a typical A4988 stepper driver chip, and I also noticed that Vision Miner sells a replacement motherboard with absolutely no more information on it other than replacement motherboard for Intimsys Fun Mat HT, and that it is branded and etched with the Intimsys logo on it. I think it's running Marlin, Anyway, I'm sure by the rules of the internet, someone will correct me in the comments and let me know. Thank you for that preemptively. It uses a very decent and responsive color touch LCD to communicate with the printer and also includes a well-balanced knob input as well. You know, for when you're feeling knobbish. Although I would have laid things out a bit more user-friendly in the menu system, it still gets the job done perfectly well and you will learn it very quickly. Additionally, the printer allows you to change many settings on the fly, as they say whilst mid-print, such as uh, nozzle bed and chamber temperature, and filament flow and speed. Yes, Karen, those two are different. They're not the same thing. Google it, bruh. Here's your Karen joke. It also apparently has built-in Wi-Fi, although I could not get it to work. I assume it was an issue with my demo model. Speaking of things that I could not get to work, the FunMed HT has a beautiful built-in camera that I struggled with for about an hour before relinquishing the device to the Chinese engineering gods and swiftly giving up. Following the same route as the Vision Minor Oaks who also state that you just shouldn't bother with it. I don't know but there it is and all I have to say is <laughs> sorry about that. Now all those heaters and motors and electronics definitely do use more power than your average Prusa i3 or the likes however in the same arena it does actually use power very wisely due to its insulated build and clever temperature monitoring and trust me it works so well to keep those parts perfectly square and unwarped. So what can I do with this behemoth of steel and glass? Why is it so special? Well, for one, and probably the most pertinent reason, if you won't mind taking a peek into the future of medical application technology, uh, are you uh, peeking up what I'm putting down? <laughs> a wink. <laughs> Have I peaked your interest yet? <laughs> wait, wait, okay, sorry, sorry, that was the last one. And yes, of course, I'm talking about peak or P-E-E-K or polyether, ether, ketone. No, not that diet that your gym butters on. I'm talking about the thermoplastic that due to its high temperature retention has fantastic mechanical and chemical resistance, making it highly resistant to thermal degradation. Stay with me now. This means printed peak parts can be used as an advanced biomaterial for medical implants. Now that you have that information, Please don't think that you can buy one of these and like start biohacking your pelvis for more thrust or something like that. This machine is best suited for pros or anyone that wants to print. Just don't harm yourself. 
I think that's good at life advice in any case. Just don't harm yourself mentally, physically, emotionally. Moving on. In order to print peak, you need to heat up to 450 degrees Celsius. That's probably like 3 million Fahrenheit for our American compadres out there. Uh, heck, I don't know. In order to get to that temperature, you need a strong hot end, something forged directly from Navadalia itself. And for that, we have what resembles an E3D V6, consisting of the usual heat block, thermocouple, nozzle, heat brake, heat sink, and additionally, a mount block with a tension spring installed for triggering an end stop switch for easy bed level assistance. How's that? It's been pretty robust since my use, no major issues to report. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it for now. But let's talk more about that spring tension block that it mounts to, and more specifically, how it interacts with the bed. The bed is actually a two-piece system when you get it. Part one mounts to the printer's e-gantry, and the other part, which is made up of a borosilate glass and a coating, just snaps right into place using magnets, which means you can easily remove the bed from the gantry, then safely remove your part and clean it off, because trust me, you're going to need to get that thing out of that enclosed space before trying to remove your print. High temperature prints loves to give you a bit of attitude, but that's when rafts come into play. The FunMed HT uses its own software for slicing called the Intim Suite. Seems like it's based on Cura. Actually fantastic software, I gotta say. You guys know that I'm a Simplify guy myself and there were no shortage of Simplify profiles for the FunMed HT and I tried a few of them and even created my own. However, although it came close, it didn't quite get the same results as when slicing with the Intim Suite software, which is just tailored for the machine itself and I can't fault it. After getting up close and personal with this machine, wait, I guess you could say I got intimate with it. Okay, last one, last one, that was the last one. I gotta say I'm smocking it, except for the power usage. Escom doesn't play. I would use this printer as my go-to, even for PLA. As you know, it's winter now in Johannesburg and bruh, my garage is <coughs> cold. You can even see my Lani solution back there covering my CR10. So this thing already has a well-insulated construction ready to print any time of the year with really fantastic results. Great, now that's over. What are you gonna do? I'll tell you what you can do for me. You can go support me on Patreon. All I'm asking for is some rants from my bras out there. Yeah, that's you. You see, if I can get some support, then I don't have to worry about where my next meal is coming from. And I can focus on doing these uh, happy Tash things all the time. So uh, make a Tash happy and go throw me some of your dosh. And uh, you know, I'll shout shout on my next video as well. And I'll also love you long time. Uh, or until you stop paying me. <laughs> okay, and that being said guys, please check out my Instagram, subscribe and like, and uh, see you next time. Cheers bros.